Hello, my name is Robin Calvert and Cloak and Dagger opening Gambit has one foot in the real world, the other in a bizarre, larger than life design escape of its own. The two main characters, one of them is a famous actor, Alexander Dramascus, a master of disguise performer, best known for his role as a masquerader, a jewel thief, a notorious jewel thief who strikes internationally, particularly around the French Riviera. It started life as a one-off TV movie, a bored actor, played by Dramascus, resting on the French Riviera, plans a series of daring high-risk jewel robberies, utilising his physical expertise in different disguises. A transatlantic co-production for a series of 22 episodes quickly followed. The programme seized public imagination for its melodramatic tense plots and avant-garde production values. Act 1 would establish the masquerader's objective. Act 2, the execution of the crime, that dramatic licence always demanded, involved an 11th hour hitch. The masquerader would leave his calling cards, which would sometimes include the costume, always a belated invitation to a robbery, a tape of some light chintzy muzak, played to taunt the usually absent owners, and the obligatory mask. Act 3 would resolve any fallout from the theft eluding the authorities, etc. The masquerader was so successful that within a year, Damascus realised he would need to focus on the role, albeit a role with such incredible scope, for eight months of each year, to the exclusion of all else. The series was a gigantic success. Series, indeed, followed series. By series three, Damascus was transformed into a very wealthy man by a merchandising colossus, able to live across the world as a raconteur. The first big screen spin-off was a worldwide hit. It was clear others must follow. To accommodate this, Dramascus, now executive producer and occasional director of the television series, requested two younger co-stars join him in the retitled television series M for Masqueraders, preferably unknowns who could use the show as a launch pad and generate good publicity to maintain a high profile for the franchise in the public eye. Block scheduling enabled him to undertake at least one other project a year beyond the Masquerader franchise. The chapter goes on to explain how Damascus left the series behind and moved on to other roles, which garnered him an Oscar nomination. Then, one day, someone tried to pull off a Masquerader robbery. It failed and the culprit apprehended. There was another incident, but on that occasion the robber got away with it. There followed another and another. The media whipped itself into a frenzy with tales of the so-called copycat masquerader, believed to be a crazed fan. In fact, Damascus felt an urge to prove above accepted standards of authenticity in performance that there was one role he could be, down to his very fingernails. He had no need to wait for commissioning editors to bring his fictional character back to life. <clears throat> All those years of experience pretending to be the masquerader, learning the lines, listening to the advice of ex-cons in that field, rehearsing the capers, executing his own stunts, it would all be put to good use. Damascus might not be the masquerader on TV or on the big screen anymore, but he could be the masquerader, or the so-called copycat masquerader in real life. To make the crimes more authentic, Damascus decided it was only going to work if he allowed the modus operandi of the fictional character down to the last detail. For his first robbery, he stuck close to the source of the original pilot, selecting a location along the French Riviera. His objective, a priceless ruby ring. In the best masquerader tradition, Damascus planned the crime meticulously, executed it with verve, left his calling cards and got out, just in the nick of time. Damascus felt shot in the arm with the elixir of life, reborn, regenerated, digitally remastered in Technicolor LSD, a perpetual high, as if his greatest hits collection had taken up permanent residence in his soul. The downside was a somewhat necessary lack of personal recognition. <laughs>